What is going on everyone? Welcome back to the channel. Real quick, if you haven't already, please make sure to hit that like button and subscribe. Only about 6% of my viewers have subscribed and it helps the channel out greatly. So today we're talking about the F-16 Fighting Vulcan and how it is absolutely incorrect in game right now. So currently the F-16 has some massive issues and the big one is its FCS or flight control system and Gaijin is yet to model flight control, you know, computers or flight control systems. So the FCS of an F-16 is a relaxed static stability fly-by-wire system that helps make the aircraft agile. So basically what that system is, is it allows the aircraft to be st stable in Kinwin flying because the F-16 is an aircraft that's made not to be stable below Mach 1 flight. Once it hits Mach 1, it gets more stable due to the aerodynamics that change happens when an aircraft passes Mach 1 and especially on the F-16. So the F-16 was made to be not necessarily aerodynamic and in game the issue is the F-16 can overperform that. So the F-16 should be limited to 9 G's. It shouldn't have the ability to go farther than that and that's really the issue that we have in game currently that I see. The F-16 is, is, not, is performing way farther than it should be and that is a you know issue. So the F-16 was the first production fighter intentionally designed to be slightly aerodynamically unstable, also known as relaxed static stability (RSS) to both reduce drag and improve maneuverability. Most aircraft are designed to have positive static stability, which induces the aircraft to return to straight and level flight attitude if pilot releases the controls. This reduces maneuverability as the inherent stability has to be overcome and increases a form of drag known as trim drag. Aircraft with relaxed stability are designed to be able to argument their stability characteristics while maneuvering to increase lift and reduce drag, thus greatly increasing their maneuverability. At Mach 1, the F-16 gains positive stability because of aerodynamic changes. So once it hits Mach 1, it becomes a little bit less maneuverable, but becomes more stable. And really, that's, you know, you're not, never going to want to be Mach 1 in an F-16 in a dogfight. But the issue in game right now is that the amount of G's the F-16 can pull is completely unrealistic. The F-16 in game can pull 31 degrees or 13 G, uh, 31 degrees a second of turn at 13 G's. That is not realistic at all. It should pull at max 25 to 28 degrees a second at a 9 G max. Anything above 9 G's will completely rip off the wings of an F-16. And I've heard a lot of people talk about this, and a lot of people will complain that the F-16s are overperforming, which they are. The F-16 is a major aircraft in War Thunder. Almost every nation has an F-16 or an aircraft a lot like the F-16. And to have it be added incorrectly, it, it's a lot like the MiG-23. The MiG-23 just saw massive nerfs earlier this year, and a lot of people were very upset. The MiG-23 is found in, I believe, what, three to three, four air nations? It's a major aircraft for Russia, and its nerf affected a lot of people. So... I would like to see Gaijin fix the F-16 now rather than fix it later and, you know, make a lot more people upset. So absolutely, you know, like I said, at max, it should be doing 25 to 28 minimum or it's, you know, what it's doing in game right now is a 31, 31 degrees a second. That is not at all realistic at all. And the thing is, though, I've heard so many people talk about the F-16 about this, but no one wants to address other aircraft and flight control systems at all. So flight control systems do need to get added to the game, and what a lot of people talk about is that means that U.S. aircraft will get a massive nerf, because U.S. aircraft have flight control systems that you know make sure the aircraft doesn't overperform and you know kill the pilot or damage the aircraft. And yes, the F-16 does a G-limiter, same with a lot of other U.S. aircraft. But at the same time, a Russian Su-27 or MiG-29 is not going to go do 10, 11, 12 Gs. It just can't do that. It, it, every aircraft is limited to 9 Gs. That's due to pilot limitations, not aircraft limitations. To my knowledge, there's only two aircraft in the world that can handle above 9 Gs, but obviously they can't due to pilot. That is the F-22 Raptor and, the, and it claimed the Su-57. The issue is, like I said, pilot limitations are a thing. And on fourth generation aircraft like the F-16, the F-15, the MiG-29, the Su-27, the F-18, they're all limited to the same limitations, 9 Gs. 
Now, the flight control system might mean the F-16 gets, you know, less rates per second, but it will also nerf every single other aircraft. The Su-27 itself has a very, very bad flight model. In real life, in testing, when the Su-27 was first introduced, it crashed a lot. It was a, an alarming amount due to it, you know, the introduction of the flight control system that it has, and th you can Google that. Russian aircraft are made to be a lot more maneuverable and pull a lot more AOA in a dogfight. That is something comparable to an F-18 Super Hornet, and not really much comparison to other U.S. 4th Gen aircraft. The F-16 should be able to beat almost every aircraft in the game in a two-circle or in a rate fight, and in a one-circle, it should be pretty competitive as well. Now, in first-turn ability, I do think the Su-27 has an edge, same with the MiG-29, but I don't think in any sustained dogfight, any aircraft should be able to come close to an F-16 or an F-15. That's just my opinion. And also, again, I don't think it's fair to want to say, or for me to say, let's all just jump on board and nerf the F-16. Does the nerf need to ha come and change? They need to change how the flight control system works and the degrees per second it pulls? Absolutely. But again, they cannot add a flight control system for one aircraft and not add it for other aircraft. If it were to come, it would be a massive change to how aircraft work, and it would need to come for every single aircraft in the game, at least for modern jets. So you, you would see massive nerfs to the Gripen, the F-16, the F-15, the Harrier, the Su-27, the MiG-29, the F-14, every aircraft. In game, it is not that unrealistic to see an aircraft pull an absurd amount of Gs that isn't even realistic numbers. I've seen aircraft like a Tomcat pull 20, not 20, but pull, you know, 15 Gs. Yes, it was arcade, and arcade is unrealistic. But I've seen realistic, I've seen something pull 13 Gs. The F-16 can pull 13 Gs if you pull really, really hard. Can it sustain 13 Gs of turn? No. Can it pull 13 Gs for a brief minute? Yes. At maximum, you should never see anything above 9 Gs. And... The thing is, U.S. aircraft can't go over that without ripping off wings or completely, you know, destroying them and killing pilots. In game, or IRL, the Russian aircraft don't tend to have this limitation, which is where a lot of people I hear come and say, well, that means they're more maneuverable. It might mean they're more maneuverable in one turn, but again, guys, limitations to a pilot are a thing. However, Gaijin decides to want to model that. 9Gs and above, that will start to have severe limitations to the pilot. And that is a very, you know, well-proven thing. There's also a difference between negative Gs and positive Gs. I'm not going to go really deep into that, though, because I'm not really scientific. But if you're interested, you can do your own research. Anyways, please make sure to hit that like button and subscribe and comment down below what you guys want to see in the future. And the Discord is linked in the description if anyone's interested in joining it. I hope you guys enjoyed. And like I said, do let me know what your guys' thoughts are on flight control systems and the F-16s overperforming in general. And I will catch you guys in a later video.